Hey there, everybody. My name is Dr. Chris, and I am an aspiring silver leader with Young Living Essential Oils. I'm also a Los Angeles-based chiropractor specializing in pediatrics and pregnancy for 30 years. I'm a wife, and I'm a mother of three grown children. So thank you so much for joining me tonight to learn about Young Living Savvy Minerals Makeup. I would love for you to say hi if you're watching tonight and maybe tell me which brand of makeup you're using or which cosmetic you can't live without. For me, it would be a tie between eyeliner and lipstick. So uh, let me know what that is for you. Savvy Minerals by Young Living is a game changer as it empowers women of all ages to look their most beautiful without the risk of harmful chemicals. So if you want to learn a bit more about all the toxins in makeup and cosmetics, head over to my Dr. Christine Anderson Chiropractor YouTube channel, of course, after this show, don't leave this now. And I will put a link in the description because I just went over 11 chemicals in makeup that you do not want in your body. And that is why I'm here talking about Savvy Minerals because it is incredible. So before I get into the makeup, I want to remind you that before you apply your makeup, you want to make sure to prepare your skin just like a painter would prepare a canvas. I'm not going to go into detail right now. I'm going to save that for next week or when I go through proper skin care. But basically, you want to clean your skin, you want to tone, and you want to moisturize. Those are like the absolute foundation things you want to do. So right now, the makeup that's on the market is filled with toxins. The average woman puts on over 168 chemicals every day, and I think that's even a low number. So you're, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I've been using whatever brand of makeup forever, and I haven't gotten sick, so, you know, so what? But guess what? You're still not safe. Unfortunately, there's something called bioaccumulation or body burden, you'll hear, and that's the total number of chemical or chemicals or toxins that start to build up in the human body. So we have a detoxification system, but it can get overwhelmed. And it's sort of like the proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back. You don't know when that's going to happen, when that burden of toxins gets so much in your body that you start having symptoms or illnesses or, um, you know, really serious things. So continuous exposure overloads our natural detoxification system and leads to build up in our bodies, and therefore that can create problems and disease. So enter in Savvy Minerals Makeup. This is the cleanest makeup on the market, and it's the new standard of clean beauty, right? We don't need to go without. All of Savvy Minerals products by Young Living are formulated without things like parabens, phthalates, petrochemicals, synthetic fragrances, bismuth, or talc, so you can radiate natural beauty without harming your body, which is what is important. Have you ever heard the statement, beauty kills? Yeah, we don't want that. So even compared to other mineral makeup, Savvy Minerals is clean and high quality with no cheap fillers like talc and bismuth. If you go listen to my presentation, you'll hear all about that. But that's before I started using Savvy Minerals, I think that's what I was using. Um, I just went to the health food store and bought whatever, um, whatever brand of mineral makeup, right? Thinking, okay, this is pure. This is good. But then I tried Savvy Minerals makeup and felt the difference. And um, I'm pretty sure there were fillers in there. Yeah, not good. So Savvy Minerals makeup is totally made from natural minerals. No synthetic fragrances, fillers, preservatives, or dyes. It's free from talc, like I said, bismuth, parabens, phthalates, and petrochemicals. All of the Savvy Minerals makeup are vegan friendly or vegetarian. There's a few things that have beeswax in them, um, but they're never tested on animals. 
And it's impossible, I know, to avoid every single toxin in your life, but you can limit the amount with healthier choices. And you can make choices about what you're actually bringing into your home, including what you're cleaning with, what you're putting on your body, um, the food that you're eating. So all these choices that you make, just like there's bioaccumulation in the way that's a negative of building up toxins, there's also that accumulation of taking the burden off, like peeling those away so that there isn't so much burden. So you're going to be either adding to your burden or subtracting and by not bringing those toxins in and applying them to your body, you are going to be reducing that toxic load, which is super, super important. So let's get right into it. Before you apply anything to your face, as far as makeup goes, you need primer. Most people miss this step. Now, these, this is actually from my personal stash, so it's a little beat up because it's been in my cabinet, but here are the primers. Let me get the glare off of there. So there's a mattifying primer and a hydrating primer. That's one of each. And actually, I will use both of them. Sometimes I'll put the mattifying primer um, on my kind of shinier areas, and then in the drier areas, I'll put the hydrating primer. But primer prolongs the wear of your makeup while keeping it in place, kind of like a paintable prime, the canvas before painting. So the hydrating primer is going to help your complexion appear radiant and younger looking. It's going to minimize the look of the pores and fine lines and create that smooth surface for the foundation to adhere to so that it will last a long time. It's going to help moisturize your dry skin and it has no nano ingredients in it. It's fortified with things like coconut oil and shea butter, so totally natural. The mattifying primer is going to help keep your shine to a minimum so that you will have a flawless finish that your makeup can last all day. It's formulated with Manuka and tea tree essential oils. So those are going to help support your skin and give, that, give your skin that matte finish and a long lasting wear without making you break out. So it's going to reduce the appearance of blemishes and it's non comatogenic meaning it will not make you break out. So it is gonna smooth any fine lines, it's gonna provide that even surface and it's gonna help extend the wear of your makeup. If by any chance you run out of primer or you haven't purchased it yet, you can just make sure that you Take care of your skin, apply uh, facial serums and your moisturizer right before your makeup goes on so that it has something to adhere to. So that's it's best to do the primer, but if you don't have that, it's better to make sure that you've done all that prep for your face. I also wanna just take a little detour and talk a little bit about the Savvy Mineral brushes. So I don't know which I love more, the makeup or the brushes, because they're, I know they're both incredible and I'm glad I don't have to choose. So these brushes are made by, and again, this is my foundation one. I really, uh, I gotta clean that. I try to clean them once a week, but, um, so these are them and they're super, super soft and luxurious. I mean, it just feels so good on my skin. They are cruelty free, so they're vegan. This is the, um, uh, what type of brush this is? I can't, now I'm like blanking. It'll come to me. I want to say Kabuki, but I know that's, is that right? Anyway, it'll come to me. Um, this one I put the veil on with. I really love this. Uh, but anyway, these are made by a family in Italy. They're super soft and luxurious. They're cruelty free, made from synthetic fibers that are easy to wash. They are derm dermatologist tested, hypoallergenic, and they are vegan friendly because they're not made from animals. So um, there's a veil brush, foundation brush, the lush brush, blush brush? Where's my blush brush? Here's my blush brush, right? Um, eyeshadow brush. What's this one? This is the blending brush. 
And then there's some brushes you um, to apply eyeliner. So there's an eyeliner brush and then there's some other angled brushes that I use sometimes to put on eyeliner if I don't want a, a thin line. Or for eyebrows, you can work on them using that. So I love the brushes. Anyway, let's get to the makeup. Yes. So say hi if you're on with me so I know you're out there. Tell me what your favorite makeup product is or your favorite uh, cosmetic foundation, lipstick, whatever. All right, so the foundation, it diminishes the appearance of imperfections and blemishes, minimizes poor appearance, brightens complexion, and enhances natural beauty. It comes in 10 different shades to accommodate any skin tone. And you can blend mul multiple foundations together to create your perfect look. So if one color isn't quite what you need, you can mix colors, mix and match, because it's all in powder form. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Again, this is my stash. And I basically use Warm 2. It's kind of hard to see with this, but it's kind of a, a yellowy color. I'll use Warm 2, and sometimes I will use Warm 1 um, for highlighting. So there's that. So it comes in powder. So you can mix, match. I could even mix. Let's just say I wanted to... Um, uh, to pink in this tone up, I could even mix in some of the blushes. So you can kind of change things up with the palette. Sometimes I'll use the eyeshadow called Best Kept Secret as a contour for my cheeks. So you can mix and match anywhere. You don't have to stick with whatever this says. The foundation includes high quality mineral based ingredients like mica. That is the main portion of the foundation. Boron nitrite helps to increase the adherence of the product to the skin. And there's also something called laurel lysine that is a skin conditioning agent and aspen bark extract that acts as a natural preservative. So no chemicals there, guys. It's just mineral makeup. So I'm going to help you kind of choose what shade that's going to look like for you. And by the way, I'm going to put in the description a link to the catalog, which shows you all the colors. It's a virtual catalog, so you can just get on there and have a look at the colors. And if you need help, I can help you do the color matching. I'm really pretty good at it. Even virtually, I can help you do it. Um, but there's a few things that you can look at. So number one, this is a quiz to help decide what colors are gonna work best for you. Are the veins on the inside of your wrist more green? A, green, or B, bright blue or purple. So this is an A, B sort of thing, and you'll know why in a minute. Number two, do your facial undertones look better next to A, yellows, peaches, golds, or B, blues, pinks, or roses? So A, more yellow, peach, B, blues, pinks, roses. Number three, do you look better in brown, tan, cream, or B, black or white? Number four, do you prefer A, gold jewelry, or B, silver jewelry? Five, when you go in the sun, what happens first? Do you A, tan, or B, burn? Number six, is your natural hair color more A, blonde, strawberry blonde, red, brown, or black hair with more of a gold, red, orange, or yellow undertone? So more of like a Mediterranean look? Or B, Blonde, brown, or black hair with more blue, silver, violet, and ash undertones. Number seven, is your eye color more A, brown, amber, or hazel? Or B, blue, gray, or green? So if you chose mostly A's, you'll probably like the warm tones with your complexion. And that is what I am. Um, I definitely have more of a, let's see if I can... So hard to see with the light, but I have more like green vein. There you can kind of see more like green veins versus blue. And when I look at photographs of myself, I definitely have a more warm complexion or olive olivey complexion versus more of a white or ruby complexion. So I definitely these are both warm tones that I showed you. If you answered mostly Bs, you're more, more likely to prefer the cool tones on yourself. 
Now, if you have a lot of redness in your complexion and you chose more bees, even if your skin is white, but it tends to be ruddy or red, some people will add in some of the warm colors to the cool to kind of tone down that red. So there's a little bit of an art to it. So, you know, being an artist, I kind of love this stuff where it's sort of mixing, matching. And again, if you need help with that, I can certainly help you with it. I'm pretty good at it. Now, to apply the foundation, you can certainly just take your brush, put some, um, just put some of the foundation in the cap, put your brush in, tap, 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 and apply. So you wanna get most of it off. So this is the, the warmer color. And I already have some on, so woo. Um, I prefer using the wet method and I use misting spray. And I spray my brush first. So I spray it a few times, just kind of let it sit for a second and then pour the powder in the cap and then I'll just touch this in and again, I'll tap it so that I can get the loose powder off. And then I'll just use circles and put it in. And I'm gonna do a video for you guys on my quick five minute makeup. I do have one on Facebook already, but I'm gonna do it for YouTube as well. I just wasn't set up with the right lighting today and that's kind of important when you're putting makeup on. So I will do that for you. It can be super quick, seriously. I mean, the makeup I have on now is probably more, like I have definitely a more blush on because of the um, lighting, but this all took like five minutes. If I'm going out, I might spend longer, but it, on the day to day, you don't need to spend a long time. So a little bit about the misting spray here. It uh, was designed by Gary Young as a part of this line to transform the powder foundation into a liquid. And I do know some people that make a liquid foundation by using a separate bottle and they'll put the powder, the foundation powder in there and add the misting spray and actually make liquid foundation makeup because if that's what they prefer. I think the reason Young Living doesn't make things into a liquid is then you've got to put a preservative in there so it doesn't go bad. So this way you get to make it your own in small batches and then you don't need a preservative, which is, we don't want that. We don't want the chemicals in there. So the misting spray smells amazing actually. It's got skin nourishing ingredients such as aloe, cedarwood, geranium, lavender, and rose essential oils. All of those are so amazing for your skin. And I use those in my serums, which again, a topic for another day, but definitely things that you want on your skin. Um, let me see. So the great thing is too, you can add layers. So if you want a light coverage, which I usually do, I just do one layer. If you want a, a heavier application, you just keep layering on with more and more of the Savvy Minerals. It's just really totally up to you. Um, the next thing is the veil. So this is something that you don't necessarily have to do. Um, again, it's a very translucent powder. It looks white, but it just goes on translucent. And I do have the veil on. I put it on my hot spots because with lighting, I don't want the lighting to bounce off of me. So it kind of just gives you a translucent, airbrushed, um, more finished look. So I definitely will use the veil if I'm going out or I really want that polished look. And it also helps to set your foundation to make it last longer. So if I know I have a long day, I might use it too. So there's a veil brush, which I do have, but I couldn't find right now. So you can use that or the, I'm going to, I don't know. It's like a kabuki brush. I cannot remember the name. It'll come to me. Um, again, you just stick it in the powder, tap it, swirl, and put it on. Super easy. Quick, quick, quick. The next is the blush. And you guys, it's like there's really not much to say because um, it's going to be the same thing. I use, I do believe you're blushing. It's like a pink, pinky, peachy, shimmery color. I'll use that on my day-to-day -day basis. And for tonight, I did add a little bit of charisma because I wanted it to be a little bit intense. So again, I layered. 
I just layered it till I got the look I wanted. There are, I think there's five or six colors of blushes. So again, there's something for everybody. Um, then there's bronzer. So you can use bronzer a couple of ways. Sometimes I will use it as a contour. I don't know what I do with my bronzer. <gasps> well, I have my bronzer brush. So I will use it as a contour and I'll just use it here. And sometimes if I, you know, I, I might not want so much blush, but I might just do like a sun-kissed look. And there are two bronzers, Crowned All Over and Summer Loved. And the Crowned All Over is the one I use. It's a little bit lighter because I have more fair skin. So th that's what's great is there's something for every skin color. It doesn't matter what color you are. You are going to find something that works for you. Um, so you can contour that. Uh, you can contour under your jawline. You can contour at your hairline. So we'll do a little tutorial. And there's a whole bunch of people out there doing tutorials with how they're putting on their makeup. Some of them get really fancy. I'm pretty like low maintenance. All right, there are at least 10 different eyeshadows with Young Living. And the one you start with is something called Best Kept Secret. It's a very neutral color. This is one also I will sometimes use as contour because I have such fair skin. Um, so you start with that and you just apply it on with the, um, with the, The eyeshadow, God, I've been talking too much. So I'm just kind of putting it in there. I don't have any eyeshadow on, but I can just apply that and then whatever I want to put over it, I can put over it. So I didn't do any contouring tonight because I was running late. So there you go, you get to see. The other really cool thing with the eyeshadows is that you can do something called foiling. And let me take. I can take this one. This one's called Spoiled. It's sort of like a peachy color. That just got all over my... So you can use the misting spray. And I'm just going to put a little in my hand to actually really coat my brush with the misting spray. And then I'm going to dip it in the powder and you just kind of get this wet. So now it's wet powder and it makes it a little bit more shimmery. I don't know if you can see that. I know the lighting is not right. So I like doing that. That's a really cool way to do it. And I've seen people even take these powders and mix them with the toner from Young Living and um, press the powder into palettes so they make a palette with it. I might experiment with that one day, but. Um, so you can just have fun with that. There's some darker colors here. This one's a little darker. It's called Envy. It's like a whoosh, like a plum color. So you can use that for highlighting your eyes or even as an eyeliner if you want. Again, just because it says eyeshadow doesn't mean that you have to use it for eyeshadow. Um, for darker skin, there's other colors like determined and residual and unscripted. And like I said, you're, I'm going to put the link so you can actually look at these, all these colors. Um, duh. there's the eyeshadow brushes. Young Living has a couple of palettes they released at their convention, um, in the summer. And I don't have them here with me. They're at my office, but again, you can have a look at them. There's some really cool ones. So let's talk about the multitaskers. Um, I don't have a multitasker with me, but there's four different shades depending on your coloring. There used to just be a, the dark brown, but now they have like a, a reddish lighter one and a, a medium color. So you can use the multitasker for whatever. It's a multitasker, right? You can fill in your brows. You can use it as eyeshadow. You can fill in your lash line, cover gray hairs even. people use it to, to cover the gray hairs with their for their roots using depending on the color. It doesn't work so well for me because they don't have pink, but you know, not yet. Um, so you can use your eyeliner brush to do that. Where are you? Here you are. So there's the eyeliner part. 
And then this part you can use for your brows. So angling it and, and filling it in. All right, eyeliner is next. So I have done a couple of things with eyeliner and I will show you definitely when I show you what I do with my makeup. If I want a really dramatic look, I'm gonna use what's called jet liner. It's just black powder, okay? And I put the powder in the cap. I wet my eyeliner brush, um, mix it in with the powder and get it really nice and wet and then I will line my eyes. I know you have to have a steady hand, it's not easy, but it looks really, really good. The other thing I've done is I've taken the palettes of um, that I have and I'll wet the angled brush and I will put it in the, the palette itself because that's compressed powder and then I'll use that. And actually on my eyes tonight, this is from one of the palettes that they don't have anymore, unfortunately. It's kind of like a silvery gray smoky color that I really like. So um, yeah, so many different ways. Or you could just use the dry powder to get more of a smoky look. So whatever you want, it can either be um, a defined or smoky look. Um, and then we're to mascara. Now, Young Living just came out with two new mascaras for their April um, spring thing that they had at the beginning of the month. And I ordered them, but they're not here yet. I, were hope, I was hoping they were here. There's a lengthening one and a thickening mascara. So they're on their way, but again, you can have a look at it. I'm going to use the two of them together to lengthen and thicken and work synergistically. So all the mascaras are infused with lavender essential oil because lavender is very nourishing for our lashes and um, just helps to uh, keep everything um, happy with those lashes. Now, the mascaras do contain beeswax, just so you know, so they're not vegan. And I feel okay using it because I talked to Young Living, I talked to the people there, and they assured me that they're not. it's not tested on animals, and also it looks like they're really being um, conscious with how they handle the bees. So no bees are harmed in this production of beeswax. I'm really... I usually try to stay away from bee products like honey and beeswax when I don't know what's going on. So I kind of like, that's sort of a an area that's a little bit gray for me, but if you don't mind then, um, or if you are a you know, hardcore vegan, you might not wanna get the mascaras, just so you know. All right, lips. So to prep your lips, there's something called a poppy, poppy seed lip scrub, which is really great for removing the dead skin of your lips because there's nothing worse than putting your lipstick on and it kind of gets all flaky and you want to, it, it like dries your lips out, which none of these lipsticks do because they have so much emollients in them. Again, some of them do have beeswax, um, so you might want to look at the ingredients in that. Some of them do, some of them don't. I tend to love the pinky, types of colors. Um, tonight I put on, oh yeah, I put this one on. I put Sweet Life on and then over it I put Anchors Away. It's a lip gloss that's got more of a reddish tone to it since I had some red on. So um, the lipsticks are super smooth and creamy. Seriously, I cannot believe how amazing they are. They don't contain gluten. They have sweet almond oil, vitamin E um, that are going to help moisturize your lips. And there's a couple of different lines now with the lipsticks. So have a look at them because they're amazing and tons of shades too. Um, and then same thing with the lip glosses. So there's pinks and reds. I actually like this one, which I didn't think I was going to. It's called Embrace and it's like the lighter color. By the way, I have pretty much every single 
piece of Young Living Savvy Minerals makeup. So if you are in the area and you want to see it, you just come on by. We'll have a makeup party. Um, this one is the anchors away. Yeah, I showed you that one. All right. Are there any questions out there? No? All right. Well, like I said, I'm going to put a link to the Savvy Minerals catalog in the description. I'll put a link to the toxins and makeup uh, presentation I just did. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me this evening. If, uh, if you have questions, you can let me know. You can contact me via my email or my website. I would love to help you customize your makeup palette for you so that you can look amazing. And uh, I'd love to help you get started with your Savvy Minerals makeup. So let me know how I can help. And join me next Tuesday when I talk about proper skin care because you don't have proper skin, your makeup is just not going to look as good as it can, right? So please like and share this with your friends and family. And when you subscribe to my channel, you're going to be notified when I post a video. So have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye, everybody.